Hello everyone, it's Matt from The Pen Habit, and I'm glad to have you back for another video pen review. Now, the pen for today's review was provided to me by a very generous donor, a Pen Habit donor, uh, who provided me the pen, asked I not use that person's name, uh, and then the pen was available for raffle or giveaway. Since I can't do the raffle, we're going to be doing a giveaway of it, and it's a great pen. So whoever wins this one's going to be very they're going to get a good pen, I think. Uh, so to the person who sent this pen in, thank you so much. You know who you are. And to the rest of you, head over to penhabit.com the day or so after this video gets released to see if there's a giveaway going on, because there probably should be. All right. The pen in question is from a company called Laban. Laban, Laban. I, it's a Taiwanese company. Uh, I actually ran into the gentleman who runs the company in... The, at the DC show, and I asked him how the name of the company is pronounced, and he didn't give me an answer. So I'm going to call it Laban. Um, there, there you go. That's that's how I'm going to call it. The uh, company was started, as you can see here on the top of the box, in 1981. They've been around so for almost 25 years now. And uh, take the top of the box off, and it comes in this kind of high gloss piano black pen coffin with the little metal medallion on there. Laban, 1981, opens up, and we have this little beauty on the inside. This is the Laban Mento in Autumn Flake, uh, and then, you know, the you've got the description and the warranty information and a cartridge on the inside of the coffin. So, you know, nice packaging, but fairly standard. A little heavy duty for, for pens in this price range, but, but quite nice. So if you're a big fan of pen packaging, that's a pretty good one. So here is the Laban Mento. Um, it's a big pen. And just to give you comparison's sake, let's take a look at a couple of other well-known pens. So here is the Jin Hao 450, the Mont Blanc 149, the Twisby Eco, the Pelican M1000, and maybe we'll do it up here, the, uh, the Lamy All-Star. So you can see it's a big pen. It's probably closest in size to the Mont Blanc 149, but a little bit girthier, especially in the cap itself. Let me get these out of the way here. Um, you know, kind of a standard cigar-shaped pen, although I will say it is not as streamlined as many other cigar-shaped pens. So it's got kind of a, it feels a little bulbous, especially in this area of the pen right here. Um, it's made of this uh, autumn flake acrylic, so you can see it's kind of uh, orangey, sienna, auburn, red, got some black flecks in here and some browns and golds, so it is very autumnal looking. The, it's got a nice, uh, very stiff clip with not a whole lot of spring to it and doesn't, to be entirely honest, feel super securely attached. Uh, this feels like a clip you could just pop right off the pen. Uh, nice band here in the middle that says Laban and uh, nothing else on the band. Tapers down to a kind of a pointy cigar shaped, you know, pointy end for cigar shape. And you can see the, uh, the little hole on the end here for where they, uh, where they put it on the lathe. And we'll show you this. It's uh, one and a quarter turns to get the, the cap to come off. There you've got a Laban branded nib in, it's a steel nib. So it's a bicolor steel nib. Got a really nice Laban logo on there. Uh, this is a fine nib, black plastic section. One of the things I really like about this is it's a very, very smooth transition. I mean, their threads are here. They're not sharp, but it's smooth transition from the section all the way up to the barrel. So no matter where you want to hold the pen, you should be able to find a nice place to hold it. The person who got me this pen or who sent this pen bought a couple of them because they said that they got these pens for the larger grip uh, due to some arthritis issues that were starting to crop up. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you're fairly new to fountain pens and you find yourself getting sore wrists, aside from gripping the pen too tightly, look at a pen with a slightly larger grip. Uh, people who have arthritis or 
hard times holding pens, sometimes find these larger grips a little bit easier to work with after they get used to writing with something that's so girthy. The pen is a converter cartridge pen. Unfortunately, it does have a metal tenon on the section, so you cannot use this as an eyedropper. That and the fact that there's a hole in the bottom of the, the barrel. Don't, don't use it as an eyedropper. <laughs> you will probably be uh, unhappy with the results if you try. Uh, it uses standard international converters and cartridges. Interestingly, the converter on this pen is threaded, but the tenon doesn't accept threaded converters. So um, my hunch is they just have kind of, they put, get threaded converters and then different pens have them and, and some do and some don't. Um, so yeah, in terms of functionality, I mean, there's nothing terribly unique about this other than the material. I haven't seen a lot of materials quite like this. It is a standard cigar-shaped pen. It's big. It's well-made, though. Um, the threads are very smooth. It feels super solid, with the only exception being the clip up here, which does not feel particularly solid. Um, this is a hefty pen. It's it's actually, I like it, I like it quite a bit. Um, feels really good in the hand, and as I mentioned, I like the, the smooth transition here. One little thing I will say is I find I have to, every now and again, I have to tighten the section down a bit. It, it starts to come loose. Once I do that, it usually stays that way for quite a long time, but every now and again, I do have to tighten the section. And uh, it does post, so you can post it if you want. I find it a little long posted, so I, I and, and it's a big pen anyway, so I don't really feel the need to do that. Um, okay, so this pen retails for around $100 US, which is a little on the high side for a steel nibbed pen, um, but it's a turned pen. It's an acrylic turned pen. You're not going to find a lot of turned pens in the $100 range. Um, you know, comparables in this, this range would be something you might get from Franklin Kristoff or Edison, for instance, although this is more mass produced. Uh, than those those pens are. So um, the fact that this has a slightly lower cost makes sense. So let's let's go ahead and do the measurements and I will show you how it writes. So you are looking at 151 millimeters when the pen is capped. So decent size pen there. Uh, uncapped, we are looking at 131.7 millimeters. So about 132 millimeters. Nice fit in the hand without that can be posted, as I mentioned. Posted, you're looking at a, a not as long as you would expect, 168.6 millimeters. So it's still long, but it's not, you know, you're not looking at 170, 180, you know, millimeters. It's it's a little shorter. If you've got small hands, it's going to be back heavy, though. Um, it's If I hold it a little bit further up, it's not too bad. But um, like I said, I, I don't feel the need to post this pen at all. Um, you are going to be looking at about 12 and a half millimeters in the section, the widest part of the section, and about 16 millimeters at the widest point of the barrel. The cap is almost 18 millimeters, which is really, really at the widest point, which is right up here, which is really quite wide um, for the cap. So if you've got a pen case with smaller pen loops, this is a pen that may not fit in them. Um, this pen won't comfortably fit in, for instance, the pen loops on my Franklin Christoph Command Center folio. Uh, it fits fine in most of my elasticized pen loops, but if you've got a leather pen loop, this may be too big for that. And then in terms of weight, it's heavier than you would expect considering it is an, a mostly acrylic pen. So it's 20 grams without the cap. Cap adds an extra 10 for a total of 30, so a nice mid-weight pen. Um, now, I like this acrylic. I have to admit, personally, I don't love it. There's nothing wrong with it, per se. It's just a matter of taste. Um, and I can't even really explain why, except I, for me, the little black dots in here don't totally fit. Um, but it's, uh, despite that, it's, you know, it's, it's a nice color. And for, for uh, the autumn time of year, it's a, it's a really apropos pen to use, especially if you like matching your pens to your ink. Uh, Diamine Autumn Oak in this pen would be wonderful. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some writing. Let me show you all about how it writes. All right. So this is the Laban... Mento in the 
Autumn Flake Acrylic. It is a steel nib, Laban branded in bicolor, as I mentioned. <laughs> Good grief, I can't write today. And uh, it is a fine nib. And it's a true fine. Uh, tr I, even though this is a, a this company is based in Taipei, Taiwan, the, the nib feels a little bit more Western in its size. This is not a, like a Japanese fine. This is more like a European fine. So I don't know who makes Laban's nibs, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's a German company. And the ink for today is a Pelican Edelstein Amber, which considering this is Amber Flake, kind of a fitting combination too. And I believe this was the ink of the year for 2014, if, if memory serves properly. Oh, here's your quote. Okay, so this is really quite a nice nib. It's very smooth, just a, a, a hint of feedback. Uh, the tines were completely in alignment when it came to me. Um, it is, as I mentioned, a fine nib, and if you're looking towards, let me go down here just a little bit. Uh, if you're looking for wetness, it's considering it's a fine nib, it's actually decently wet and while still keeping its its Western fine length. So it's it's a pretty good wetness here. Um, in terms of line variation, uh, there's really not very much. This is a very, very rigid nib. Um, so don't don't expect much out of this. It does appear to be a fairly standard number six size nib though. Uh, so you know, if, if for some reason you wanted to swap it out with a gold nib, I believe you probably could pretty easily. I, I've not tried it, but I it just based on looks, I'm pretty sure you could do that if you wanted to. Uh, in terms of reverse writing, it's scratchy, um, going this direction especially, and quite dry, but you, you can get a finer line, and you could probably polish that out a little bit if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, it's it's a very nice nib, and it's a very good writer. I haven't had any issues, which it's it's unusual. Last season, I felt like I had a lot of issues with pens with ink starvation. Um, I just I haven't had any issues uh, with this with that this year, um, and I'll take it because frankly, ink starvation is one of my biggest bugaboos when it comes to fountain pens. I just I hate those pens that can't keep up with just regular everyday writing. That's one of those things that drives me kind of crazy um, about, about mo some modern pens. It's like, if you can't get the ink to flow, don't make pens. You, know, you had one job. Make the ink flow to the tip of the nib. Do that job. If you can't do that job, find a, find a different business to be in. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, overall... Really nice pen, very comfortable in the hand. Uh, the balance of this is nice. The little extra metal in the, the section puts the weight down here where I like it. It's large enough, it doesn't need to be posted. The finish is super smooth. Um, overall, I just, I really like this pen. Um, I wish I liked the acrylic a little bit more, but I'm sure there are some people out there who would just, you know, go gaga over this acrylic. So, you know, the fact that the acrylic doesn't doesn't speak to me doesn't diminish my like of this pen at all, um, because uh, you know it comes in other acrylics too. So, 
this is a, a one that I would consider if you're looking for a pen in the sub hundred or around the hundred dollar range, uh, and you like bigger pens, you want something with interesting materials, um, and that not everybody has. Look at the Lebans. There's um, they've got a lot of stuff, and some of their pens are quite expensive. They've got you know abalone shell pens and. I, they've got all kinds of, of designs. My father picked one up from their table in, at the DC show, and he really likes his as well. So they're, they're nice, well-built pens, um, and uh, in the around the $100 price range, I'd say very worth it for a pen like this because you can get a whole lot less pen for a whole lot more money and still not have it right as well as this one did. So that will do it for my review of the Laban Mento in autumn flake. Thank you again to the person who sent this pen to me for review and for giveaway. The giveaway will start on penhabit.com a day or two after the video gets posted and will run for a week or two. So uh, depending on when you see this video, if you uh, haven't if you haven't, head over to penhabit.com and check it out over there. You can also leave comments on this video post. The link is down in the show notes. Uh, you can leave comments here on YouTube or anywhere else that I frequent on the social medias. And if you have any other questions or comments, you can also email me penhabit at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.